case that I want to show is an implant case. The image that I'm showing here is after the implants were placed. The importance of the SUNY 3D imaging uh, in this case is more retrospective. Uh, I want to show you that I had a mi minor complication uh, because I did not have the SUNY 3D image to begin with. Uh, one of the dangers of uh, experienced implant placement is that there's a tendency for us to uh, extrapolate, if you will, from a 2D image such as this very this excellent quality Panorex, but what we really need here is uh, 3D. What I'm referring to specifically is the lack of clarity as to the area of the mandibular nerve. Um, this is a superb image, but you can see that the mandibular nerve kind of disappears down in this area. And the other thing I would note out is that if you look closely, there is a lesion here that uh, appears to be very close to where that distal implant was placed. Let me uh, go now to the 3D and I will show you what I'm specifically talking about. So here is the 3D image and as we go over here to enhance this you'll see that the distal implant is right at the top of that lesion. Mandibular nerve is here, but this is a lesion that um, a radiologist has pointed out to me is some kind of a vascular lesion. At the time of the implant placement, we got significant bleeding. We were able to control it, successfully place the implant, and the patient has uh, full sensation. So for those of you who are saying, well, that looks like the mandibular canal, I would agree with you, but anatomically that is not what we encountered. I think the canal is here and the patient has um, uh, no nerve uh, uh, impingement and has full feeling uh, in their lip. With that said, uh, in hindsight, I wish I had have had the SUNY 3D imaging to um, choose a different location for the implant. I would have perhaps gone a little bit more palatal because I, from this image you can see I have tremendous width um, and uh, I would have been able to avoid this structure. The case that I'm showing now will demonstrate to you the importance of 3D imaging in orthodontics. As you can see, this is a young lady with retained primary teeth and four impacted cuspid teeth. The key issue with impacted cuspids in orthodontics is where is their position? Are they palatally displaced or are they buccally displaced? Up to now, we have used 2D imaging to uh, try and figure out exactly where the cuspid is. We do it either the buccal object rule or we uh, will take an occlusal view. Let me show you the value of 3D imaging here as we uh, then go through these. I will bring up the 3D image and I will manipulate it and rotate and as you can see the cuspid is displaced buccally. That's a relief because that means we don't have to go chasing that thing on the palate of the patient's mouth. As you can see as I'm manipulating the 3D image, I can very clearly see where the cuspid is placed and without the 3D, I don't think I, I think it would be more of a crapshoot. So for me, this is an incredibly valuable uh, part of the SUNY imaging system. And as you see over here on the right hand of the screen, you can get another view of the uh, placement of the cuspid. So after looking at the 3D reconstruction of the uh, palatally of the Buckley 
place cuspids. We're now coming back to the cephalometric image. And let me just enhance it right here. I'll head in the right direction. Uh, this is by far the best cephalometric image I have seen on any of the systems that we have used. The SUNY cephalometric, which is a, a uh, real-time image, is a, um, it's a superb image. And as I come in here, the ability to manipulate and identify the anatomic landmarks um, is, is just, uh, the image speaks for itself. The SUNY 3D can be very valuable in endodontic procedures in that it gives you a chance to look simultaneously at the tooth from the sagittal and the cross-sectional view. Here's a case of a endodontic fill and we can enlarge this picture and we can rotate through and see the fill of the two mesial canals. after the root canal is finished while you're also looking at the sagittal view of this. So for, for diagnosing and treating and postoperatively, this, this can be very valuable in your endodontic procedures. The SUNY 3D can also be extremely valuable in diagnosing any cases where you're contemplating removal of impacted wisdom teeth. This is a panorex, and I'm going to enlarge this just a little bit. We're looking at number 32 impacted, and we're also looking at the mandibular canal coming through right here. Now, those roots are obviously inferior to the mandibular canal, so that's something that and when we're planning this case out, we'd like to know where that nerve is, where the roots are in relation to the mandibular canal. So what we're going to do here is show you the 3D of the same image. And this shows clearly that the inf inferior alveolar canal, mandibular canal, right here is lingual to the, to the roots of this tooth. And we can look at it in, in a couple of different ways here. but So we know if we remove this tooth surgically and we stay buccal of the root, we should be fine and not have any involvement with the mandibular canal. The Professor Suni 3D cone beam image can also be used to evaluate any grafting that you've done after the graft has been placed. Here's a case where congenitally missing second bicuspids on the uh, mandibular arch are going to be replaced by implants. And this was a this was a 3D image taken after the um, bone graft was placed, and you can see the graft is filling in the void. Um, but also staying above the mental foramen, so not to involve that. That's an important anatomical structure that, again, we want to be aware of when we're placing this type of a graft. And you can see the reason for the graft was the knife edge ridge at the, at the coronal portion of the ridge. It w would not allow implant placement at the time, so we're grafting this area to widen the ridge so the impact, implant can be placed later. <laughs>